Hello and welcome. Kendra Morgan here with Cards by Kendra, and today I'm sharing an interactive light-up card that I made using the Outdoor Friends digital stamp set from TLC Designs. This set features a couple of fairies and a ladybug to create a camping scene, and I think it is absolutely adorable. Now to make a light-up card, you'll need to either have a light kit or you can create a circuit using the items that you see here. You'll need to have some conductive copper foil tape, some round 2032 3 volt batteries, some foam tape, a ruler, some tape of some sort, either packing tape or scotch tape will work, and then you'll need some LED lights or bulbs. The ones I have here are 5mm bulbs. They're a little bigger than what I'd like to have, but this is what I had on hand. But you notice how there's two legs, or leads is the technical term, and one is longer than the other. The longer one goes with the positive side of the battery, which you'll need to know later on when we build our circuit. Let's start with our card front. I layered the fairy sitting on top of the log next to the campfire, and I made the images slightly bigger so that my light would fit behind the fire. I printed the image out on Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock with my laser printer, and I'm trimming it down to three and three quarter inches by five inches. Now I forgot to hit record before I started coloring, but the colors of Copic markers I used to color the fire were Y11, Y17, YR16, and YR18. I used my T ruler to mark where I wanted the ground to be on each side, and now I'm coloring the logs with E55, E57, and E59. Now I started with the darkest color first. For the glow around the fire, I'm using Y11 and Y13. And then for the ground underneath the fire, I'm using E53. And then I'll be making some dots with my E57 marker and then kind of blending that together. Next, I'm adding YG01 to kind of blend the dirt area out into the grassy area. And then for the grass, I'm using YG07 to color the rest of the ground. And then I'll be drawing on blades of grass with YG67. I'm using a flicking motion from the bottom toward the top so that the blades of grass will get thinner as I flick it upwards. Now for the sky, I'm using B93, B95, B97, and B99. Starting with the lightest shade first, which is B93. And then I'll be working my way toward the top of the panel, getting darker. I also wanted to keep it lighter around the halo of the fire. Here I'm just adding some more blades of grass with the YG67 color. 
To color the fairy, I started with the darkest of my skin tone shades, which is E53, and I outlined her face and under her hairline. And because the fire is my light source, I wanted to make sure that the left side of her face and body were light. So then I used E51 and E50 to blend toward the left side. And I forgot to color the sticks, so I used E59 for that, and I colored her eyes with YG07. Now for her hair, I decided to use my neutral gray Copics. And since the darker shades look almost black, I started with N10 to outline the edges of her hair on the right side. And then I switched to N7, which is a little bit lighter for the strands closest to the fire. I used N5 to outline the left hand side and then I drew circles with that to make the curls. And then I blended it all together with N4 and N2. For the flower, I used RV25 and RV23, and then also used that for her dress. For her wings, I used V12, V15, and V17, basically all different shades of purple. And then I brought in some other shades as well, BV11 and BV17. Now I initially tried coloring this seam with Distress Oxide inks. I used a mask so that I could ink blend the night sky background, but I really messed it up around the fire, so I decided just to toss it and start over. But since I still have this mask, I'm going to use it to cover up my fairy and the fire so I can add some stars to my night sky. I'm using some Dilutions Shimmer Spray in white linen, and I'm just flicking it on using the end of the sprayer to create little dots. And of course, I wanted a little more, so I decided to switch to my paintbrush, and that made it go a lot faster. And then I just set this aside to dry. Now this next part, I wish I had not done, and you'll see why here in a bit. My plan was to cut out the inner flame using my X-Acto knife, and then apply some vellum to the back of my panel so that the fire would light up better. But I didn't realize that the LED light was going to be way too bright once I put the circuit together and placed the panel on top. So you'll see what I do to fix it here in a moment, but I did want to show you how I did my measurements to know where to place everything on my circuit using the little flame that I cut out. To start building the light up part of the card, you'll need a one inch by three inch strip of card stock, and you'll need to score this in the middle at one and a half inches, and then again on the next score line at one and five eighths of an inch. This is going to be the battery holder, and it will also act as our switch. By scoring it to make an eighth of an inch section, when you fold it, the battery should fit perfectly inside, but we'll set that aside for now. I wanted to line up my panel on my card base and have the little inside flame piece stay in place so that I'll know where to put the LED light and build the circuit. I used some purple tape and I folded it over on itself and then I taped the very tip of the flame to the back side of my panel. The idea was to center the panel on the card base and the flame piece would stay. It worked, but since I mentioned that I wish that I hadn't cut the flame out, I would have just measured how far from the edges I needed to place the light and marked it with a pencil instead of what I'm doing here. <laughs> and so I removed that purple tape, but first I traced the flame with my pencil so I would know where to glue it down. Place the battery piece in the right hand bottom corner and then I traced where it should go directly on my card base. To design my circuit I took my ruler and marked some lines where my copper tape will run so that it will touch both sides of the battery. Now it really doesn't matter how you do this as long as you draw it out and you have one positive line and a negative line. So first I did the negative line. This will actually touch the back side of the battery and come it comes away from the flame to the right. It kind of goes over at an angle and then down so that it runs inside of the battery holder. And then of course the positive side will come away from the flame in the other direction. So 
So before putting the copper tape down, I wanted to make sure that I glued down the battery holder in that place where I traced earlier. And the whole point of this is so that you'll have the, the battery placed with the negative side down. And we're gonna put that copper tape, this here, along the lines that were drawn. Now it took me a little bit to get the backing off of this tape, but whenever you're putting the tape down, you wanna be really careful not to rip it. And whenever you're going around corners like what I have here, it can be a little tricky, but if you do accidentally rip it, it's okay because you can just add another piece on top. Now I did struggle here at the 90 degree angle where it goes straight down so that it will go inside of the battery holder, but um, you can just smooth that down with your bone folder once you get it laying exactly where you want it. Next, I ran the other piece from the bottom of the flame to the right. The tape should go along the bottom edge and across the top of the battery holder and then over onto the other side on the inside of the holder. And this is so that the copper tape will be able to touch the top side or positive side of the battery. So I ran my bone folder along the top of the tape to make sure it was smooth. Now remember at the beginning when I mentioned the two leads on the LED bulb and that the longer lead needs to connect to the positive? Well, of course, the shorter needs to connect to the negative part of the circuit. So I bent the legs so that the shorter lead would be able to lay across the top of the angled piece of copper tape and the other lead would lay across the top of the other piece. So when everything is touching and the battery is in place, it should light up. This is where you'll want to take some tape and secure the legs down. Now I decided to use packing tape since all I had was removable scotch tape and it doesn't really stay. I didn't want it to come undone, but I used a long, uh, one long piece and I made sure that the legs were all the way down. Now it took me a little bit to get this exactly right because I used one piece of tape. It probably would have been easier just to use smaller pieces of tape, but um, I didn't really want this to come undone. And I, I thought that by putting both pieces down at the same time and using the same piece, it would make it go a lot better, but um, I was wrong. So I had to carefully remove that packing tape to make sure that the, both of those legs were, were as close to the copper tape as possible. Um, I did have to fiddle around with it just a little bit, but I did get it to stay and it worked. You just wanna constantly test it. Now, this was my first time ever making a light up card, so it was more like trial and error. But I figured out that if I bent the top of the light to go toward the left, the bulb wouldn't stick up so high and it helped those legs to stay down. Now, I would have bought smaller LED bulbs to use, but these were some that I had bought last year for a STEM project for my students. I'm a technology teacher, but this works. But I know that there are several different light kits out there that would make this be so much easier. And you can buy those. They're designed for use with cards so that the lights are flatter. And TLC Designs does have them for sale in her store. She has the Pear Blossom Easy light kits available. But I just used what I had. I secured the battery down with another piece of packing tape along the right hand side, making sure the battery was directly centered over the negative piece of copper tape. The next thing you'll want to do is place some foam tape around the battery, but in order for the light to only come on when the battery is pressed, you have to make sure that the foam tape is thicker than the battery itself. So I did have to double up the layer of foam tape strips around the battery. But the reason I placed the battery holder along the right bottom edge of the card panel is so that I will have access to be able to replace it if the battery ever dies. When I placed the panel on top to see how it looked over the light, that's when I discovered that it was too bright through the vellum part of my flame. So to mute it, I glued a piece of yellow cardstock onto the back of the vellum. I initially cut out a square, but then when the light shone through, you could see the outline. So I had to try to cut around it with the piece already attached with glue. That's why you see it looking all jagged. 
but I did fix it and luckily you won't see this once it's glued down. So before attaching the panel to the card base, I had to figure out where to press exactly so that the light would come on and it just happened to be on the log and I'm using the TLC Designs Action Stamps to stamp the word press onto the log using an acrylic block and some tuxedo black ink. I like to stamp onto a mouse pad so that I get a good even impression. Next, I added some foam tape along the top and left edges of the panel. This will need to be doubled up so that it's thick enough for everything underneath to fit. And after placing all of the tape to the back, I kept testing it out to make sure that my light still worked. And when I did this, I accidentally tore the copper tape with my fingernail along the bottom edge of the battery holder, which broke my circuit. So I had to add another strip of copper tape on top of that to fix it. And yes, it is working so much better now. That's definitely what I needed to do. Also, I discovered that the foam tape that I used was too wide and it covered up part of my fire halo. So I had to move some of the strips and also cut out a section of the far left piece so that it wouldn't show through the panel when the light was on. I wanted to add a little more to my scene. So I used the tiny mushrooms from the land and sea die set and cut those out using my Big Shot. And then I colored those with my Copic markers and glued them down to the right side of the log. And then I decided to use some clear wink of Stella on the flames of the fire and on the flower in her hair, just to add a little bit of sparkle. Next, I used my white gel pen to add more stars to the background, the dots on the mushrooms and some highlights on the flame and the fairy's wings. This is where you can see that edge of the foam piece where I cut out around the halo. So I'm just removing the backing of the foam pieces to attach it to my card base. And um, when, when I did this, it worked for a little while, but then it stopped and I don't know why. So I had to take the panel off to see what was going on. And when I did this, I accidentally tore the edge of the card base on the left hand side. So I had to make a frame out of some yellow cardstock. I used some nesting rectangle dies so that it would have the centerpiece cut out. And I'm using that to basically cover up what I tore. I think it quit working because I placed some foam tape on top of one of the copper strips. So be careful where you place your foam. It's weird because after I had adjusted the foam pieces and put it back together, it started working just fine. So I don't know, very weird. Um, I think it looked okay without this yellow piece on there, but it looks good with it too. So <laughs> that's, that's my way of fixing my little tear. To finish off the card, I'm using a reverse sentiment strip from my stash that says a toast to you and I'm trimming it down and attaching it toward the top of my panel. Now, I decided to add some Stickles glitter glue and ice glaze to the wings of the fairy and I put some Nuvo drops in morning dew to her eyes. It dries clear but it just makes it shiny. And then I added some gold glitter glue to the flame as well. And this finishes off my card. I really hope you like it. If so, click the thumbs up and leave a comment. Also, please consider subscribing if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Have a wonderful day.